Namaste friends, welcome to Bano Biology Center for True Learning. Here I request you to subscribe our YouTube channel Bano Biology Center for more videos and press the bell icon for latest updates and notifications. In this unit, we will learn the another concept that is lactation. I mean, how milk production process takes place in human females after giving birth to the new let us begin with the meaning of lactation. What is lactation? The process of production of milk in the mammary gland after the maturation. Of course, as we know the fact, mammary glands have been preparing themselves for preparation of the milk after the delivery of the baby. After maturation, mammary glands start the function of the milk, that is the production of milk. The production of milk by the mammary glands after the paturation for providing the nourishment to the newborn baby is called lactation. Let us first look at the important hormones responsible for the lactation process. There are two main hormones involved in lactation process. One is prolactin, another one is oxytocin. So let us talk about each one separately. The first is about prolactin hormone. The main, it is the main hormone. Prolactin is the main hormone involved in lactation process. The another name for prolactin is luteotropic hormone. It is alternatively also called as luteotropic hormone. The gene responsible for the prolactin hormone present on the sixth chromosome. The name of the gene is PRLG. Actually, lactotropic cells of the adenohypophysis, I mean anterior part of the pituitary gland, secretes the prolactin. It is very important point. Which cells secretes the prolactin hormone in which part of the pituitary gland? Lactotropic cells produce the prolactin hormone. These cells are present in the anterior part, I mean adenohypophysis part of the pituitary gland. If we see the chemical nature, it is almost similar to the growth hormone. As growth hormone boosts up the growth of the person, I mean stimulate the, I mean promote the cell division and cell differentiation. Here also prolactin hormone um, work towards the promotion of the growth. Prolactin hormone is comprising of 199 amino acids. Next, prolactin hormone is essential for galactopoiesis. What is galactopoiesis? The continuation of the production of milk or the continuation of the lactation process once it has been established. It is called galactopoiesis. The prolactin causes breast development in association with estrogen and progesterone. The estrogen and the progesterone hormones also plays a key role in development of the breasts. Here, prolactin also gives its contribution towards the development of the breasts, not alone, but by having the association with estrogen and progesterone. If too much of prolactin secretes into the blood, what happens? Here, the too much secretion of the prolactin into the blood leads to the amenorrhea. What is amenorrhea? Amenorrhea is the condition in which lack of menstruation occurs. Here, amenorrhea is broken into two types. One is primary amenorrhea, another one is secondary amenorrhea. If uh, menstruation do not begin even after reaching the 16 years of age yes, or after attaining the puberty is that is considered as regarded as the primary amenorrhea. Then another one is uh, secondary amenorrhea. Sometimes uh, so there will be a skipping of two to three menstrual cycles. So due to the uh, serious illness, then emotional stress and some other reasons. This type of situation 
regarded as the secondary amenorrhea. The amenorrhea simply can say that the lack of menstruation. Here, the prolactin provides passive immunity. The lactation provides the passive immunity because at the time of uh, birth or after birth, the newborn baby do not have the strong immune system. So there will be a greater chances of uh, infections by certain kinds of bacteria and viruses. To fight against those bacteria and viruses, uh, the lactation itself take the responsibility of uh, protecting the baby. Then there is one more hormone similar to the prolactin secretion that is thyrotropin releasing hormone. Actually, there are two hormones or two factors uh, influencing the prolactin hormone. One is thyrotropin releasing hormone, another one is a dopamine. Here, the thyrotropin releasing hormone is uh, secreted by the hypothalamus. Of course, dopamine hormone also secreted by the hypothalamus. Here, the thyrotropin releasing hormone stimulates the pituitary gland. Especially the anterior part of the pituitary gland is influenced by the or stimulated by the thyrotropin releasing hormone, so which induces the secretion of the required amount of the prolactin hormone. Then another hormone, dopamine hormone, it is also secreted by the hypothalamus, but it works negatively. So when prolactin levels uh, are high and when milk production need to be slowed down or stopped the dopamine will be secreted by the hypothalamus then it go and uh, inhibit the secretion of the prolactin hormone by the pituitary gland so this thyrotropin releasing hormone so works positively and uh, dopamine hormone works negatively here some diagrammatic representation is given in the first picture the baby is sucking the mammary gland when baby begins sucking the signals will send to the hypothalamus part so there are uh, some motor some neurons so they carry the signals to the hypothalamus immediately hypothalamus ordered the anterior part of the pituitary gland to secrete the prolactin then prolactin command reaches the alveoli part and stimulate the uh, alveoli cells immediately milk production will start then the baby can have the milk from the mammary gland to the nipple this is the actual process here the sucking act as the stimulus this should be a stimulus for production of the prolactin hormone and by the production of the milk so it is from the, the first picture so what we are able to understand so they come to the second picture here sensory input is suckling when baby begins uh, sucking immediately signals uh, go go to the hypothalamus part so here the hypothalamus secretes the thyrotropin releasing hormone then it comes to the anterior pituitary part and stimulate the uh, cells of the anterior pituitary to secrete the prolactin hormone the prolactin hormone uh, so busy with the milk production this is the positive feedback right this is the positive there, on, on another side there will be negative feedback if the uh, secretion of the prolactin hormone need to be stopped uh, then uh, the hypothalamus secretes the dopamine hormone the dopamine hormone goes to the anterior pituitary and uh, so inhibit the cells of the anterior pituitary part uh, not to secrete the prolactin then leads the gonadotropin releasing secretion and an ovulatory in fetus. So in this diagram, the plus symbol indicates the stimulation, the minus symbol indicates the inhibition or suppression. Another important hormone takes part in the lactation process is oxytocin. Already we have the information about oxytocin, how this hormone helped in the contraction of the so it ran wall at the time of the delivery of the baby or maturation. Here it also participate in the lactation process. So let us see how. 
Oxytocin mainly helps in make the smooth muscle layer of the alveoli to become contract to squeeze the newly produced milk. So due to the presence of the prolactin hormone, the alveoli, alveolar cells of the mammary gland produce the milk. So they have to be to reach to the nipple region. It is only possible uh, when squeezing is happening. So when smooth muscle layers of the alveoli become contracts, automatically the squeezing of the produce milk happens. The milk reaches the infant mouth through the nipple. Here oxytocin is necessary for milk ejection reflex, which is also called let down reflex. So what is milk ejection reflex? So in previous videos, uh, so we know the term, uh, the fetal ejection reflex. Here is, it is milk ejection reflex. What is it is? What it is? The mechanism by which milk is transported from the breast alveolar to the nipple is known as milk ejection reflex. Actually, the vaginal place of production of uh, milk happens in the alveoli cells. From that place to nipple region, the milk has to transport. That mechanism is called milk ejection reflex. Here the milk ejection always initiated by the suckling means no suckling. If there is no suckling, there is no milk ejection reflex. Here one diagrammatic representation is given. So I hope it is helpful for us in understanding the working of the oxytocin hormone in the lactation process. Here the baby is suckling the mammary gland then the sensory nerve impulses from the areola region i mean the block spotted uh, region on the mammary gland is areola from that region sensory nerve impulses uh, so reaches the brain that is uh, hypothalamus here the brain receives sensory impulses from the areola and uh, releases oxytocin from the hypothalamus and posterior pituitary so it is a movement of the uh, oxytocin hormone from here to here here what he releases so when oxytocin releases this uh, alveolus uh, the parts will become contracted then the milk squeezing of the milk happens the milk reaches the nipple region on another side uh, lactocytes in mammary alveoli produce milk in response to the sensory nerve impulse when signals uh, comes from the uh, hypothalamus, the alveolus begins their function that is production of the milk. Here the oxytocin triggers uh, myoepithelial cells to squeeze milk from alveoli so it drains into lactiferous ducts. Here, it is very important point. Here oxytocin hormone mainly triggers the, stimulates the myoepithelial cells to squeeze the milk. So it is a positive feedback. This is the positive next we move on to the milk produced by the mother during initial days after the birth that is colostrum colostrum is the milk produced by the mother after giving birth to the young ones colostrum also called bee stings or first milk the first milk produced by the female humans for her baby is called colostrum. Colostrum actually appearing in yellow color. In this class, the colostrum is present. So you, you can easily observe the color of the colostrum. It is in yellow color. The reason is present of the keratin. The keratin gives the yellowish color to the colostrum. In another glass, uh, the milk is in white color. So it is called transitional milk, right? The milk produced by the mother during initial days after birth are called colostrum. Then the milk produced after the colostrum milk called transitional milk. Here the colostrum produced exclusively for two to five days after birth. After that, transitional milk will start to produce. It has milled mild relaxative effect here colostrum has mild relaxative effect means it helps in removal of the first stool secreted by the i mean produced by the baby here the first stool produced by the newborn baby is called meconium it is very important what is meconium the first stool 
produced inside the newborn baby is called meconium. Meconium is excreted with the help of the colostrum. Colostrum is actually high in having the carbohydrates, certain proteins, some antibodies, but low in fats. There is low amount of the fat. It is rich in immunoglobulin A. It is the secretory. So, immunoglobulin that is IgA antibodies. Immunoglobulin is the secretory antibody. Immunoglobulin A protects the mucous membranes present in throat, lungs, and intestine of uh, antibodies because uh, they are the antibodies. They helps in the they help the mucous membranes uh, the, from the infections the present in the throat, lungs, and intestine of infants. Along with the uh, immunoglobulin A, immunoglobulin G, immunoglobulin B, and immunoglobulin D also present. Then leukocytes can be seen in the colostrum. So because to fight against the uh, certain kind of bacteria and uh, viruses, those are harmful. The leukocytes are help much. Along with these components, other important special components also present they are called growth modulators here the growth modulators helps the premature babies digest system adjust to oral feeding to have the oral feeding the baby digestive system has to be suggested to make that uh, uh, to make that the growth modulators to help the premature baby so this is the diagram so which uh, expose the different components present in the colostrum milk. The nutritional factors, immune factors and growth factors are present. Nutritional, nutritional factors are energy, proteins, vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates and fat. When come to the immune factors, to providing the immunity, immunoglobulin A, immunoglobulin G, immunoglobulin B, immunoglobulin D, immunoglobulin E. Then lactoferrin, polypeptide, oligosaccharides, cytokines, lactoalbumin and lysosome so these are all comes under the immune factors present in the colostrum milk then some growth factors like pdgf egf igf1 vegf egf alpha and tgf beta also present if we see the nutritional composition per 100 ml of colostrum it is like that energy the 58 kilocalories is available 5.3 grams lactose is available 3.7 grams proteins are available then 2.9 grams fats are available in the colostrum milk it is a nutritional composition per 100 ml of colostrum thank you for watching this video